Welcome to the InRelease product tour. Over the next minutes, we will provide you with an overview of InRelease and more specifically, how it complements Visual Studio to help you and your organization automate release management. In addition to introducing many key features, the presentation will illustrate how InRelease automates releases, prevents deployment errors, and leverages existing tools like Microsoft TFS. Finally, We'll also introduce the core principles and unique architecture that allows InRelease to streamline the entire release process and better support agile development. The objective of release management is to make sure that an application is successfully tested in a series of environments leading up to and including into production. In order for that to happen, a few things need to occur. For example, environments need to be prepared, applications need to be installed, then once complete, testers, be they technical or functional, need to be notified to begin testing. In essence, to complete a full release cycle, the same application and its various components need to be installed on multiple servers. This in turn usually requires the creation of numerous scripts and configuration files. In fact, this is precisely where release management can quickly become problematic and increasingly complex as you add more applications, more versions and more components. Creating, installing and deploying scripts is arduous, time-consuming and requires constant refactoring to match new environments. Bottom line, scripts are error-prone, costly to write and difficult to maintain. That's where InRelease comes in. InRelease creates simpler, faster and less costly releases by fully automating the release cycle. It promotes complete applications, not just components and thereby avoids incomplete installations. It will also identify and prevent release problems due to the incompatibility between applications and release infrastructure. InRelease provides workflow to all the roles involved in the release process. Finally, using various metrics, InRelease provides valuable insight into the release process and extends Team Foundation Server or TFS. In short, InRelease aims to facilitate the entire release process for everyone involved. Now, let me show you how we do it. We are currently looking at release paths, or a traffic overview. In other words, a view of all the applications and their respective release paths for a given organization. Essentially, a release path is defined by a set of sequential environments that reflect distinct stages in which an application will be tested before reaching production. For example, development, QA, and production are all stages. Numbers 1, 3, and 4 are all examples of release paths. These release paths are akin to highways to production. Now, let's take a look at how we define a release path for a typical .NET application. The first step is to identify release stages. In this example, we have three, development, QA, and production. Next, for each stage, we identify the respective technical environment. A technical environment is a collection of servers on which we will do testing and validation. Now, before we can deploy to a stage, a number of steps must be completed. The first step is for the stage owner, for example, a tester, to accept that a given application can be installed. At the deployment step, typical installations are completed automatically, but if required, they can also be completed manually. A validator can also be identified to confirm the installation was completed properly and that the environment is ready for testing. Finally, the last step is business approval. Sometimes completed by a product owner, this is where one or more approvers executes a series of tests to determine whether or not the application meets the standard functional requirements. To support auditing and traceability, the system supports notifications and records each step in the approval process. So, how does it work? To begin, we take components from Visual Studio. This could be an existing build, or we can trigger a new one. Alternatively, we can pick up files from any network repository. Also, if the application has multiple components, we can retrieve and release them all at once. Next, the components need to be installed on the right servers. For this to happen, InRelease uses an installed agent, or deployer, on each target server. The deployer uses a pull mechanism to address security concerns. Deployers are constantly monitoring the server for new deployments to perform. When a deployment is pending, the system's first step is to validate the existing infrastructure for compatibility. Next, the deployer collects all the components, 
including installers, as well as any custom tools that need to be run on the component once installed. After the components are assembled, the next step is to install the application on the target server. Once the deployment is complete, InRelease registers the deployer activity and updates the system metrics and triggers the next step in the workflow. When we prepare a release, we configure both the application as well as a specific version. To define an application version, the first thing we do is ID what type of application we are releasing. This allows us to narrow the available release paths to only those that are compatible. Next, we define the list of components that are included in the application version. This includes inherited data from the application. Finally, we need to enter the specific values for each of the variables that InRelease will substitute for every stage. Up until now, we've reviewed how we define application values, components, and a version. Now, let's look at how we create and configure components. There are three items we need to address. First, we need to get the code. Options include the result of a TFS build, triggering a new build, or InRelease can retrieve the code from any accessible directory. Second, we have to address how we will deploy components. Specifically, we need to address what tools we'll need to install the component on the target server. Examples of deployment tools include an MSI deployer, DB deployer, XCopy, etc. For each tool, we identify the invoking command and arguments, or parameters. Note, these parameters can be configured for each environment. Lastly, we need to identify the appropriate variables for the given component. Having defined variables, we now have to configure the specific variables for each application version. Now that we have defined release paths and their components, creating one or more releases is straightforward and easy. To do so in InRelease, we simply identify the application, the version, and the appropriate release path, and you're done. At this point, we can review scheduled releases and if necessary, we can override default components, variables, etc. Naturally, the system assumes default configuration. This allows you to quickly and easily create releases on demand. Finally, complete release history, pending actions, requests are available for review and auditing purposes. Before we conclude, I'd like to briefly recap five key takeaways. Number one, InRelease automates application deployment so you don't have to. Number two, InRelease coordinates workflow during and between stages. Number three, InRelease intelligently prevents issues before they happen. Four, InRelease provides a number of metrics to understand and continually improve your release process. Finally, number five, InRelease leverages your existing infrastructure and tools, more specifically, Microsoft Team Foundation Server. This concludes our product tour. To learn more about InRelease, we invite you to request a personalized product demonstration via our website. Or for those of you that are eager to get started and more hands-on, we also offer a free 30-day product evaluation. To participate, register online or contact us directly for more information. 